electric potential. which we will be denoting with the letter capital V. Now you have studied before that electric potential exists where there is an electric field. Suppose you have a region. Here you have a charge Q. This region is called an electric field. Now what is an electric field? It is a region around a charge where if you bring another test charge, that test charge will experience a force. Now suppose I tell you what is the potential at the point P. Potential at a point in an electric field is the work done in bringing plus one coulomb charge from infinity to that point. So potential at a point in an electric field is the work done in bringing plus one coulomb charge from infinity which is very far to that point. Now suppose to bring say Q not Coulomb charge at point P work done is W to bring one Coulomb charge at point P, what is the work done? W by Q naught. And this is the potential at the point P. So potential at any point is the work done in bringing plus 1 Coulomb charge from infinity to that point. Now since potential is work, isn't it? And what is work? Work is a scalar quantity. So potential is also a scalar quantity. So unlike the intensity chapter, this chapter becomes much more simpler since it potential is a scalar quantity. Now what will be the unit of potential? It is joule per coulomb. Joule per coulomb. Which in one word is called volt. Joule per coulomb, which in one word is called volt. Now suppose you are asked, what is potential difference? What is potential difference say you have a region here you have a charge Q I want the potential difference between A and B now first tell me what is potential at B potential at B is a work done in bringing plus one coulomb charge from infinity to this point. And what is potential at A? It is the work done in bringing plus one coulomb charge from infinity to this point. Now where do you think work done is more? Work done is more at point A because you have to bring it an extra distance. Now suppose the work done to bring plus 1 coulomb charge from infinity to B 
is W1. And the work done in bringing plus 1 Coulomb charge from infinity to A is W2. The difference in the work done is the potential difference between A and B. So, suppose instead of 1 Coulomb charge, you are bringing a Q0 Coulomb charge from infinity to B and the work done is W1. And instead of bringing plus 1 Coulomb charge to point A, you are bringing the same Q0 Coulomb charge from infinity to A. Your potential difference, now which one is greater? Potential at A is greater. Potential at A is greater than potential at B. Since at A, work done is more. So potential difference here is the difference in the work done divided by Q0. Because I have brought Q0 charge, the potential difference between two points is the work done in bringing plus 1 Coulomb charge from one point to the other point. It is W2 minus W1. This is the potential difference Va minus Vb. So potential difference between two points in an electric field is a work done in bringing plus 1 Coulomb charge from one point to the other point. Electric potential Now here we will discuss electric potential due to a point charge. Then due to a group of point charges. And again, due to a uniform continuous distribution of charges. Now first we are going to find out electric potential due to a point charge. Now suppose I have a charge Q at a point O and I ask you to find out the potential At any point P, I ask you to find out the potential at any point P at a distance R from O. So, I have a Q charge at the point O and I ask you to find the potential due to this Q charge at a distance R from the charge Q at the point P. Now, potential at any point is a work done in bringing plus 1 Coulomb charge from infinity to that point. Now, let me first bring a Q0 charge from infinity. Let me first bring a Q0 charge from infinity. When the charge is at a distance x,
say this is a point A. When the charge is at a distance x, what is the force acting on Q0 from Coulomb's law? It is 1 by 4 pi f silent naught. And if it is in a dielectric medium of dielectric constant k, 1 by 4 pi f silent naught k, q q naught by x square. When this q naught is at the point A, at a distance x from O, the force acting on q naught is from Coulomb's law, 1 by 4 pi f silent naught k, k is called the dielectric constant of that medium. Now, I have to find out the work done in bringing this charge from infinity to the point. We all know work is force into displacement. Now, when Q0 is brought over here, this charge will repel this Q0 with a force F. Now, this force is inversely proportional to distance square. This force is inversely proportional to distance square. That means as the distance changes, the force will change. So this force is a variable force. So when you have a variable force, to find the work done, you have to integrate. There is no other option than to integrate. Now let me bring this point to a point B. The distance between A and B is very small and let this distance be dx. We assume the dx distance so small that during this dx displacement, the force does not change. We assume dx so small. It is a very small displacement. It is so small that within this dx displacement, this force remains almost constant. So what is my work done in bringing Q0 from A to B? My small work done dw is F force into displacement into angle between force and displacement. Here force is a repulsive force as both are positive charge. Now we are bringing it from A to B. So displacement and force are in the opposite direction. So you have cos 180. So once again dx is so small within this dx distance we assume the force to be 1 by 4 pi f silent naught k q q naught by x square which is constant. Angle between force and displacement is 180 degree. Now value of cos 180 is minus 1. So what is my work done? Work done is minus f dx. Now put the value of f minus 1 by 4 pi f silent naught k q q naught by x square into dx. This is my work done in bringing the charge from A to B. Now I want the potential at the point P due to a point charge. Due to a point charge. Now, I have to bring it from infinity to this point. That means, initially my x was infinity. My initial value of x is infinity. 
I am bringing it from infinity to the point P. My final value of x is R. That is at the point P. At the point P. So, I am bringing it from infinity to this point. Initially, my x was infinity and my final x is r. I have to bring it here because I want the potential at the point P. So, I have to integrate my work done. My total work done, I have to integrate this from x equal to infinity to x equal to r. I am bringing from infinity to r. Now put the value of dw from above 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught k q q naught pi x square into dx. Now 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught k is constant. I am taking the constant term outside. So this is integration of dx by x square from x equal to infinity to x equal to r. Now this is equal to minus q q naught by 4 pi epsilon naught k. If you integrate this it is minus 1 by x from infinity to r. Now substitute the value. Minus minus becomes plus q q naught by 4 pi epsilon naught k 1 by r minus 1 by infinity. Now 1 by infinity is 0. Therefore what is my work done? Work done becomes 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught k q q naught by r. Now this is the work done to bring q naught charge. This is the work done to bring q naught charge. But according to the definition of potential, it is the work done to bring 1 coulomb charge. So I have to divide with Q0. So what is the potential at a point? 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught K Q, Q, sorry, Q by R. It is 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught K Q by R. This Q naught cancels. So potential is W by Q naught. So when you divide by Q naught, that Q naught cancels. Now, from here we see potential is inversely proportional to R for a point charge. For a point charge, what was my intensity? Intensity varies as 1 by R square. See the difference. For intensity, you have another R in the denominator. Now, if you are asked to plot a graph of to show the difference, if you are asked to plot a graph to show the difference due to, in, due to a point charge, the intensity and the potential, say, along y-axis, we are plotting E or V. And along x-axis, we are plotting R. Now, for intensity, the graph will be much more steeper. For potential, it uh, potential varies as 1 by R. The graph will decrease but it will be somewhat a flat one. 
potential varies as 1 by r. But for intensity, the graph will be a steeper one. It will fall in a more steeper way. Intensity varies as 1 by r square. This one, the pink one is the in intensity graph and the blue one is the potential graph. We see that the intensity will fall much more steeper than the potential. Intensity will fall rapidly. Intensity will fall rapidly because it varies as 1 by r squared. So for a point charge, if you have a point charge, the potential becomes 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught k q by r. Now if you have a group of point charges, you have a group of point charges. Say you have a region where you have plus q1 charge, plus q2, minus q3, minus q4. You have a group of point charges. And I want the potential at a point P. Distance from Q1 is R1. Distance from Q2 is R2. Distance from Q3 is R3. And distance from Q4 is R4. I want the potential at this point. Now, potential at P due to this group of point charges, we can write it in this way. Due to a single charge, it is 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught K Q by R. If the dielectric medium is air, then due to Q1 charge, I can write this as 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught Q1 by R1. Due to Q2 charge, it is 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught Q2 by R2. Now Q3 is negative. So I will have the potential at point P due to Q3 as 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught Q3 by R3. R3 is the distance from Q3 to the point. Q4 is again negative. So potential due to Q4 will be minus 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught Q4 by R4. Now this can be written as if I take 1 by 4 pi epsilon not common. This can be written as Q1 by R1 plus Q2 by R2 minus Q3 by R3 minus Q4 by R4. Now this can be written again as 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught if there are n number of charges. For n number of charges, potential can be written as 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught summation i equal to 1 to n qi by ri. So what is this formula? This is the potential due to n number of charges. Now suppose, instead of discrete charges, you have a continuous distribution of charge. Obviously, it should be uniform. You have a continuous distribution of charge. It's a surface area. Then, at a distance r, the potential due to this dq will be 
वन बाई फोर पाई एफ साल एन नॉट इंटीग्रेशन ऑफ डी क्यू पाई आर here i assume a small charge dq from dq the distance is r so potential due to dq is uh, 1 by 4 pi epsilon not dq by r and then you integrate over the full surface now this can be line distribution of charge or surface distribution of charge if it is a surface distribution of charge if you have a surface area where charge per unit area is sigma charge per unit area is sigma then dq can be written as sigma da sigma is charge per unit area then dq can be written as sigma da if you have a volume distribution of charge if it is for a volume distribution of charge then charge per unit volume let it be rho then in place of dq what can we write Rho dv. The formula will be the same. If it is a surface area, you have instead of dq, you can write sigma da. It is sigma da. Da is the surface area. If it is a volume, if it is a volume distribution of charge, then dq can be written as rho dv. Rho is the charge per unit volume. So one second, let us recap what we have studied. Electric potential you can find out due to a point charge, due to a group of charges, due to a uniform continuous distribution of charge. Now, if you have a point charge, then at a distance r, the potential comes out to be one by four pi epsilon naught k. Q by R. That means potential is inversely proportional to R. Intensity varies as R square. So intensity graph will be steeper. Potential will be less steep because it varies as one by R. If there are number of charges, potential is one by four pi epsilon naught Q one by R one plus one by four pi epsilon naught Q two by R two. and it will continue because potential is a scalar quantity if there are n number of discrete charges then you go on adding for giving the correct sign of the charge as plus or minus now if you have a continuous uniform distribution of charge you assume a small charge dq here at a distance r so instead of this q you have dq and then you integrate over the full area if it is a surface area then dq can be written as sigma da sigma is the charge per unit area and da is the area for uh, volume what do you have rho dv for unit volume it is rho for dv volume it is rho dv for unit volume it is rho for dv volume it is rho dv so here in place of dq you just put rho dv for volume charge distribution one point to note for a potential due to a point charge children now here is a charge q you want a potential at a point p at a distance r what is the potential at a point p 1 by 4 pi s l n not q by r now potential is a scalar quantity what do you mean by that to bring plus 1 coulomb charge from infinity to this point is potential so you have to do positive work so 
if I plot a graph of potential versus R for that Q charge, it will be an inverse graph I discussed. It will be an inverse graph. If you come to this side, if you come to this side, any point this side, and you are asked to find the potential, it is the work done. This is plus charge. It is the work done in bringing plus 1 coulomb charge from infinity to this point. Again, work done is positive. So, potential is again positive. So, on either side of the charge, whether you go this side or the negative value of R, potential is always positive. So, it will be inverse. The graph will be inverse. But, even for negative R, V is positive. Unlike intensity, if you are asked to find the intensity due to this charge, intensity is a force on plus 1 coulomb charge. So, if you keep a plus 1 coulomb charge over here, what will happen? This will repel. This will repel. So, intensity is steeper and it decreases with R. It is inversely. Here V is inversely proportional to R and here intensity is inversely proportional to R square. But if you find the intensity this side children, here if you keep a plus 1 coulomb charge, intensity is in this direction. And here if you keep a plus 1 coulomb charge, this will again repel. Intensity is in the opposite direction. Intensity is a vector quantity. So if you plot a graph of intensity and R for negative value of R, you will see that it will take a negative nature. E will be negative. See, direction of intensity will reverse on either side of R due to a plus charge Q. On either side, the direction of E will reverse because intensity is a vector quantity. But potential is a scalar quantity. So for a point charge, on either side, potential is positive. But for a point charge, on either side, the direction of intensity will reverse. So potential and field Potential is positive on either side of plus Q. Potential is positive on either side of plus Q. But electric field, electric field, Changes sign on either side of charge Q. Now why is it so? Why electric field changes sign on either side of Q? I told you if you keep a plus 1 coulomb charge here, force will be in this direction. Plus Q will repel. And if you bring a plus 1 coulomb charge here, force will be in the opposite side, opposite direction. The electric field changes sign on either side of you, Q. But potential is positive on either side of Q. This is one important point to note for the difference in potential and intensity due to a point charge.